pasta that I'm going to make is a carbonara, which I don't know if people know what that means, just... All right, so a, car <laughs> a carbonara pasta is one made with bacon or pancetta, which is an Italian version of bacon. I actually prefer it with bacon than pancetta, so... Um, and an egg sauce, which I have come to understand from my dad, who's from Milan, that it's supposed to be creamy, but if you go to restaurants, you might think that that's not actually the case. And um, as a result, I usually don't get it when I'm in restaurants, because to me, it's not good. But um, so to me, a good carbonara has crispy bacon, creamy egg sauce, and correctly cooked pasta, so al dente pasta. And those three things are very hard to get right, because the normal way to cook it, the way that my dad does, and which I learned and found really difficult and continuously overcooked the egg or undercooked the bacon, was that you cook the pasta, you add the egg and the, the sizzling bacon at the same time, and the heat of the bacon cooks the egg just the right amount, but not too much. And that's, you know, something difficult to do in the moment when you're cooking and the pasta is just ready and all this stuff. So um, when I was at university, I figured out some ways to not have to deal with that and just get it to come out right. Um, so I'll try to do that again now. Um, so the first thing with making pasta is boiling water and salt. And I've been really surprised how many people do not realize how much salt you should put into pasta water. So, I have this full up to there, maybe. So, I don't know, a couple quarts of, of water. And that's maybe a bit much. Like that is what I would put for salt. And I hope you all are not too shocked by that. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're not going to eat all of that salt. Most of it's going to end up in the water that goes down the drain. So, Stir the water a little bit so that it has a chance to dissolve. Cover it back up. On this side, I... So, a trick that my dad has and that I kept is to freeze the bacon and then cut it crosswise, which makes it very easy, unless it's too hard frozen, which it was this time. But if you don't have it super hard frozen or if there's a lot of fat in your bacon, it's pretty easy to cut. And then you have nice, evenly sized pieces without trying to cut raw bacon lengthwise or crossways, which is very hard. Um, so that's in here, sizzling away, and needs to be broken up and turned, but I can show you guys, basically, we want to get it to the point that all of it is, and I'll, I'll come down the line, all of it, <laughs> that all of it is kind of brown and crispy. So, uh, no, and, and I'll break it up more now. Um, part of the reason I didn't break it up is because I was having my super late lunch. Um, so, but yes, normally while it's cooking, you just move it around a little bit and it, the pieces that are frozen together just separate. So, and it basically deep fries in its own fat. You don't need a very big pan to do this. I used the smallest one I could find. Um, I'm also not using any particularly fancy ingredients here. It's just, I try to get bronze dye uh, spaghetti where it's kind of rough looking and usually somewhere on it it'll say cut with a bronze dye. Um, this is from Costco, it's like a buck 20 a pack. Um, Right, so when they make pasta, dry pasta like this, it's only made industrially, so it's not, you can't make it at home, really. Um, and they extrude the wheat and water through either stainless steel or bronze dyes. And if it's bronze, it ends up rough, like that. And if it's not, the dye lasts a lot longer, and <laughs> it's smooth. So the bronze dye makes it, um, Hold the sauce better, basically. Um, 
So another trick, besides putting a lot of salt in, is to taste the water and just be sure that you've put enough. It should taste like salt, like seawater or a little bit less salty. So pretty salty is what we're going for. And that's a little bit over salted, which is down to, back to that, I don't usually do this much. Right, so I just got the salt a little bit off. And that's why you taste it. <laughs> so that you have a chance to adjust before you're too far in. Okay. Um, how many people are interested in tasting the salt water? Oh, right. no. No? All right. <laughs> yes, no. <laughs> yeah, okay. So. Um, <laughs> I'm making four portions, by the way, so there should be plenty. Yeah. Um, I thought everyone knew this, my girlfriend didn't, but the way that you put long pasta into a pot is that you hold it about in the middle, you grab above it and twist it, and then drop it so that it does that. That's the way you do it, so that then, when you push on it, it goes in, and all that has to happen is that the pasta gets a little bit soft, and then you can push it in, and it all goes underneath the water immediately. If you just put it in, it doesn't work, really. <laughs> so, the bacon takes a while, um, particularly when there's a lot. And so that's why I started it early. But basically, we're at T minus 10 minutes now because the pasta takes about 10 minutes. So. In the meantime, after the pasta is down enough that it goes, and you see, you just have to get it underneath the edge like that and then if you take your spoon and you go around the way that it's spiraled you can push it down and it all goes beneath the level of the water I usually try to put the lid back on and then have all the water foam up and then make a mess and my dad says like don't put the lid back on but <laughs> But if you put the lid back on, it, it boils again faster, and I've noticed that this uh, stove is not very quick to boil, so I'll put it on, and if anyone sees it foaming, let me know. Um, so this pasta has egg in it. My dad likes to put like one and a half eggs per person. I like two and a half. He told me I was making a quiche. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> This is two eggs per, per person, as, if, as it were. Um, so eight in this case. And just add a little bit of cream if I can get it open. So maybe a tablespoon, two tablespoons or so, like that. So not a whole lot, maybe a little bit more. Uh, a little bit of salt which is to help the proteins in the eggs will um, denature a little bit of salt, so it helps, and pepper. There are people who will put uh, Parmesan into the sauce. I like my Parmesan on top, so I put it on top. You can do what you want. Um, and this just needs to get stirred. Surprisingly, there are no two cup measuring cups in this kitchen. Right, but they're only one cup. Right, and this is not gonna, yeah, so. In here, this bowl? <laughs> um, 
So I would say that this is about ready. And I'll start at one end now instead of starting in the middle. So I'm going for pretty thoroughly crisped bacon bits. <laughs> Great, cool. Um, it's boiling. While pasta is cooking, you need to stir it a little bit just to help it not stick to itself. I've probably waited too long already. Oh, it's not too bad. Um, that just helps it not. If you don't do that at all, um, you end up with like a solid cooked together piece of pasta, which you then have to break up at the end, and it tears, and it's so. Anyway, do it while it's cooking. Um, I see and you're using like a spoon as opposed to like a spaghetti thingy. Is there a reason? That's for that? only for serving. Okay. Um, that will come into play. Okay. But the right for now. <laughs> I mean, you could use it now. It would just. Um, it would be harder to maneuver, and you would have it sticking. The pasta would stick to your yeah. stirring implement. And so. so normally, I do this until it's all one color. I feel like it's going to take a long time. But. Um, yeah, in, I, I use a fork because it's easier to clean, um, and, it, and it works just as well. Um, you can definitely use a whisk or a hand blender as another quick and easy technique. Um, depends what you're willing to get dirty. Really. So, that's good. No, this is just to mix it, just to get the eggs and the other things I put in, the cream and salt and pepper, all just homogenous. Um, so now, basically, we're gearing up for that point, which would otherwise be, <laughs> which would otherwise be um, really difficult, that you have these three different temperature things, and you need to combine them and have it all come out just right. and. So the pasta is still cooking. Um, should have a little bit longer. But um, the trick that I found was rather than trying to nail it right when you put it all together, to basically lowball it. and get the egg in and the bacon in and everything together too cold so that then the egg is undercooked. And what you do is then put it onto the, the fire and with a spatula, which I'm glad to see we have, <laughs> um, stir it and keep the egg coming off the bottom and not sticking and cooking and slowly warming up so that basically you're making a savory custard that you want it to be just thick enough, but not curdled. And then you stop when it's ready, and then it doesn't get any hotter, and so it's just right. So, uh, you just wait for 30 seconds, and it cools off enough not to cook the egg. Uh, you would lose a lot of heat. I, don't, I mean, it's not going to be bad for it, right? It's been cooking in water. It's not a sin. No, it's not a sin. <laughs> um, mm, I think you're okay. really That's very, very. Not done. 18. Not done. So, that's still not very cooked, so we have some time to talk. Does anyone have any questions at this point that they haven't already said? No? Right now, the bacon's hanging out because it's ready. Um, and it will, because I'm not relying on the heat in the bacon fat 
to cook it, I don't need it to be really hot. Whereas this is, this is like another element that I don't need to worry about because otherwise, if the bacon's done too early, it'll start to burn. Or you have to lower the temperature and then bring it back up just in time without burning it. It just becomes a mess. So. Like the bacon better than pancetta because of the higher fat? Um, I like it because of the smoky flavor. So this is actually the smoked bacon. Um, it also, I guess, yeah, it comes crispier than pancetta because it has more fat. Um, I also, it seems to me like there's a difference in the way it's cured. I don't, I don't know, maybe someone else here knows more about pancetta than I do, but um, they just have a different flavor. And pancetta is the original, so um, if you have the chance to try it, I would, would recommend giving it a shot, but it's also hard to find, so. Um, and more expensive, so you have three strikes against. But. Um, yeah, the lull in the middle while you wait for the pasta. This is the time to drink your wine. So all that bacon fat is going to go into Yes, um, you, you, don't, you don't have to. So um, I put it in. Uh, my dad us usually puts it in. Sometimes he doesn't. You can not. And then you just use a slotted spoon when you're putting it in. A slotted spoon so that it, uh, it drains away. Um, the thing is, the, because you end up with a kind of egg custard, it will hold the fat in it. So you don't. There's no grease on the it's fork. Not. Amongst long pastas, I prefer linguine just because they aren't so fat that they're hard to like gather on your fork, but they're also wider than spaghetti. Um, I'm using spaghetti now because that's what Costco has. So, um, yeah. What other ingredients do you plan on using? Hmm? Is it just the last? The, the last thing is the cheese, which um, I wanted to get. I, so I, I went to Costco and got this, <laughs> this uh, block of cheese, which is a pound and a half and costs $16. And a lot of the times you see Parmesan and it costs an arm and a leg. And basically, one of the points I want to make about this meal is that it's really pretty affordable. Like, there's not anything crazily expensive in it. And um, the cheese is the thing that a lot of people, in my experience, don't put enough of. And they put like three crumbs and they're like, oh great, it has cheese on it. And um, yeah, you should measure how much cheese you put in your ability to see the pasta underneath. And if you like a lot, you should literally not be able to see the pasta underneath. Like it should be solid. And I like a lot. So you guys are gonna see a lot of cheese on some pasta. Um, and even that, you'll see, doesn't actually use that much cheese because when you grate it, you put a lot of air in it. So, I'm going to say that the pasta is ready. So, colander. Not in this one, no. Uh, I usually do if I'm making pretty much any other sort of pasta dish. Um, and that's actually often the secret to good, good other pastas. <laughs> um, so. Wow, that's heavy. Okay. <laughs> um, so. I've made the mistake before with four portions of adding the egg right away and then it curdles the egg because there's enough heat just in the pasta itself. Um, but you see I've set it off the heat 
So I'm just waiting for it to cool. I don't know how hot the bacon thing is, pretty cold. Um, and that's probably enough. So I'm going to add the egg. And I add the bacon with fat. So, I've nearly accidentally gotten it to cook the egg entirely as I didn't wait long enough, even remembering. Um, but anyway, you can see that there's, in this, some spots in the egg, like particularly close on the close side to you there, where the egg is not cooked. And there's some spots where it's curdling, which it should not be. So, so it's very close to being ready to eat because all we want is. For, <laughs> well, I'll save some for you. <laughs> um, and the only thing we want to do is add a little bit of heat to just barely cook that. So while I'm doing this, I'm continuously going to the bottom of the pan so that I can see if it's curdling or what's going on. So I'm scooping all the way to the bottom every time with a spatula that will go along the bottom and not, not like this spoon, for example, which would not really clean the bottom, as it were. And every time that I see that it's starting to curdle even a tiny bit, should have used a deeper pot for this much pasta. I'm splattering sauce everywhere. Um, I think I can do it just like that, yeah. is interesting so normally right now there's some that's like completely curdled and some that's very liquid and normally if you do with just two portions it's you don't encounter this because the pasta cools off enough that there isn't a part hot enough to cook it and a part not hot enough to cook it in the same pot and this is the part that can take a kind of arbitrarily long time so I apologize if it's drawing out And you can know that the bottom is not that hot because if it was hot, it would cook the egg and it's not cooking the egg, so. Um. So this might be more like for five, I don't know. Four big portions. You definitely could. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It is tough to have uncooked bacon here, but I'm planning to cook all of that. Oh, yeah. Right now. Okay. Um, I'm just going to do four plates, and I'm not really sure how we're going to divide it up for everyone who wants to try. All right, great. <laughs> This is one of the difficulties of serving long pasta is that often there's a lot of sauce left over and you have to kind of decide 
which ones have more or less. Okay. So, the last thing is the cheese and uh, show. <laughs> you guys all right? What's going on? <laughs> you can use this side. It takes forever. I use this side because it doesn't take forever. Um, this side really doesn't take very long, but you end up with huge pieces of cheese. So, yeah. Like that. So that's like a medium amount. <laughs> like really, <laughs> you can go more. You can definitely go more. And I would finish this with a little bit of cracked black pepper on top. So. <laughs> <laughs> So, is there anyone who, for some reason, does not want the normal amount of cheese? <laughs> Speak uh, now, no? And two, and black pepper. Yeah. And you can you pass, it, pass it down. Forks. Oh, right, air forks. Air, 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 air. Right. No. Thank you. Thank you.